with that life. Ask P. Diddy. I just came from his house. Even though I'm feeling funny after drinking P. Diddy juice. Wait. What the fuck? What's happening here? <laughs> All right. That is hilarious. j -Rat, what do you think, sir? That's pretty good, right? Never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> the things you decide to put on your openings. That one screwed you up because it actually showed Drew Durga and everything and whatnot, right? So, like, I got you on that. What's going on, folks? Uh, this is Monday, uh, what, 4 24. We're here on the MCU's Booty Edge Report. That's right, J Rat. You bet you've never been on the Monday show. It's actually titled, we call us the MCU's Booty Edge Report. Uh, Andre's the pop culture guy, is my special guest co host. I'm, of course, Jeff S. True Knowledge, co host and creator of the MCU's Booty Edge. J Rat 2000 is back. Uh, he hasn't been on the bleeding edge in eons, but he's come back on, the, on uh, to be on the guest panel and rock out um, X Men '97 episode four, uh, Mutendo um, Life Death Part One, and then when he decides to uh, gracefully depart from our episode review, um, Andres and I are going to tackle some Alien Romulus Joker Two trailer reactions for y'all. So yeah, we'll put it to that ass. So <laughs> guys. Uh, j Rod, how's it feel to be back on the MC's Booty Edge, sir? Do you feel good? I do, I do. I've been, uh, you know, you know, take long breaks and then I decide to get back on. And I said, you know what, let's talk about the X Men. I saw you were doing it, I was like, yeah, yeah, this is the show I'm gonna jump back on. Oh, it. it was like that. You were just like, oh man, it was like perfect timing. You were like, hey, you want to jump on the show? And I was like, yeah, I'll jump on the X Men. We're good, oh. let's do that one. And so that was like a no brainer, <laughs> like that, like you know, like you were gonna say yes on that no matter what. It was a very high probability. If you would have asked me to get on it, I was going to say yes. Yeah. Well, hopefully, very high. hopefully you'll come back then because we like it when guests <laughs> come on. We've got some other guests come on, coming on on some of the next couple of episodes. But you're more than welcome to come back and do more with us because, I mean, this is how they're going to be. We're going to do them at the beginning of our shows, right? So this, this is how it will always be. But we're happy to have you back. Andres, how are you, brother? You ready to tackle X-Men 97 episode four? Uh, yes. This is definitely the most fun episode ever. <laughs> uh, which is great. So, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about the trailers. I mean, the fact that we got Joker 2, which I am so excited to talk about. One of the best trailers I've seen this year. So. And well, the Aliens trailer too. I wish I would have downloaded our 44,000 subscriber uh, trophy from YouTube or whatnot so I could have played it on the show. But we got it. We got it the other day. We're, we're, we're officially, we're officially, we're almost at 45,000 already. We're officially 46,000 subscribers away from getting that plaque, bitch. I can't wait to put that plaque on my wall. That's just going to be tight. Oh, yeah. There's no way to split that bitch up between the whole team. Good I'm gonna job, have to, man. That's going to have to go on my wall. Sorry, Cyber. Sorry, Andres. <laughs> I'm, not well, chopping up, I'm not chopping up my YouTube plaque. Well, I mean, it's your <laughs> channel. It's your channel. So that's, I mean, it doesn't I know. Matter. I know. Everyone knows it's my channel. I know that. Yeah, yeah. I so, get it. I know it's a joke. Yeah, yeah same. That's all. Anyway, so <laughs> all right, X Men ninety seven. Okay, J Rat, you asked in the studio before the show if we could talk about other episodes and whatnot. So I'm gonna start right off and and and, and say going into episode four, right? Uh, go to you, J Rat, then to you, Andres. Um, where are you at through episodes one through three? Like, where are you at? Like, with your with your your contentness with the show before episode four, and then I guess with episode four, like, where are you at with it? Right, you know, at that at that point, do you think? Mm, where am I at with it? Well, considering I, I know you say one through four, and I'm already at five. But if I was going to try, I am to too. Think back to think back at one through four. So the first two episodes were awesome to start off with. They were really good, getting us back on track with the X Men. Um, so. X Men '97. I feel like it was definitely made for my generation because I was 10 years old watching, you know, the original X Men. 10, 12 years old, uh, waking up Saturday mornings watching the X Men. You know, um, and to have them come back as like the same characters right where it left off is a really neat, cool, fun idea. Again, for for my generation, you know, because you, you just get back on track, but it gives you enough story to where if you have never watched the X-Men, um, you can just jump into the first episode of uh, X-Men 97 and kind of understand what's going on. 
because it's like a refresher, you know, it's been so long. And one through three, excellent. I think number four episode kind of was a little like, mm, wasn't the best episode. You guys may like it, and I, I do like it as well, but it, it definitely um, wasn't, it, it was kind of like its own story from like one and two, where they kind of like carry continuation of each other. And three is, and then kind of like with the the Mister Sinister uh, storyline that that's kind of like uh, another part of the story that they're gonna you know continue on like through the rest of these episodes because now you know there's a Jean a Jean Grey and there's a what's her name Madam Madeline Pryor Madeline Pryor Madeline Pryor you know so now now we have Madeline Pryor to carry on through the rest of the episodes with the. Uh, you know, uh, Scott Summers' baby and stuff like that. So that's like just a starting point for more story later on down the line. So I, I appreciate that one. This one was okay uh, with the uh, the whole, uh, what is it called? Moontendo? Yeah, Moontendo. Moontendo. Yeah, Moontendo. It's kind of funny, you know, just kind of seeing the video game aspect of it to kind of like uh, throw in there. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, I, it, it, it kind of got me uh, like veered away from it. And then... And then I I I hit no I know I don't want to bring up episode five but when I saw episode five it like pulled me back in like even harder but uh, overall happy with it up until Andres maybe. go ahead and I'll be right back I'm gonna grab my, my ashtray real quick go ahead Andres yeah sure just use one Andres. of those cans behind you <laughs> I, I'm a professional baby yeah. oh, you you get, gra- grab that ice behind you man what the heck. Oh my god, that is so true. I forgot. Yeah, you can put your cigarettes in your cans if it's so yeah, empty. I know damn well oh, yeah. those cans are empty over there. <laughs> oh, okay. No. I'm sorry. Use the water bottle. Okay. The water bottle. <laughs> anyway, um, no, I agree with you, J- uh, Rand. Uh This series has been definitely for us the generation that had grew up with the show. So it's been really wonderful. And uh, yeah, I agree. I think episode four, it's kind of the weakest, uh, but it's not like a big deal. I mean, yeah. It's still it's like still a fun episode. Like this is something you de- definitely expect from the Richard Show to have. It's this like bizarre like filler episode that's gonna be so crazy, which is great. I mean the one thing that this episode has where other shows don't is is Mojo. Like I love Mojo. He's such a funny, <laughs> you know, super villain, just so just so ironic and you know it's all about the showbiz and the cos in the cosmic universe which is awesome love the concept so i mean it's, it's a really fun episode and i i like you know i i, I did binge watch the you know the later season that the, the show came out and the, the i don't think there's hasn't been like a centric jubilee episode like she always like there's she's always there with like a side story you know to move forward like the iceman episode and the Witcher right. series you know she was there helping iceman to do you know find his love interest that like presumably was kidnapped by well Jason. i didn't watch it i didn't we i never watched i, I don't remember watching as a kid watching this far the iceman animated we never got this far uh andres but there's that part where when they go to mo when they when they fuck with mojo in the earlier seasons um jubilee mm. has like a crush on shatter on on, on, on um What's his name? Uh, Shatterstar or whatever. Shatterstar. I I think that's in season four. I think I didn't uh, got to that part yet. I need to definitely check that. Um. Yeah. I, I remember. I I, I like remember, I like I like Shatterstar. Yeah, Shatterstar is good. He's a good character. I just remember the season one episode of of the Mojo when he takes all the X Men into the the have you ever seen the um have you ever seen the 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 mock of him that they do on the teen titans go show with that what character no i did not (laughs) they do it they they have they have a character that's based off of him that's based off mojo it's really funny yeah i I think (laughs) i know yeah oh my god teen titans go (laughs) crazy Anyway, I'm a huge Teen Titans fan. I'm, I I think there's one character similar to Mojo. But anyway, anyway, um, yeah. So it's fine. And plus, I mean, the goodness about this episode four, it, it did kind of pick up the Storm storyline because we are going to get the standalone episode of her later in the next two episodes, I think. Uh, so that was good to like set that up. So like, I don't think it'll be standalone. 
No, one thing they did do that, that they, they did do that you didn't mention is that they did something very different. For the first time ever in the history of the X Men universe, and I only know this from re research and watching videos of other YouTubers, um, they uh, they had a dual storyline in the in the in the in the in the in the TV in this episode. It was a straight yes. dual storyline: Jubilee and Storm. Yes. Right? Yes. Normally, they don't ever do that. No, actually, the only time you see that, see, uh, that's actually the funny brother. Uh, by the way, let me correct myself. Next episode. Episode six is Life Death Part Two. That's what I'm talking about. The, the they're going to continue this as a standalone episode. But it'll but it'll still be like uh, it won't be standalone. It'll be halved. You know what I'm saying? And they'll have other stuff going on in the episode or whatever. Just like well, this. yeah. I mean, we have to pick up the aftermath of Trinosha. So like, let's not like get too far ahead. Let's not get too yeah, far ahead. Broad episode four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I want to pick up the, the the thing about the cartoon spill up storylines of two characters because that's something we did we never had in the superhero cartoons. That was always specifically cartoon shows. Like you remember in Dexter's Laboratory, there was always like two segments of episodes of uh, of different like storylines that they did, and then there's like a like a random one. And this is the first time that like I saw the X Men doing that. That's really cool because I always liked the you know the cartoon network shows when they have two like segments of uh, of different episodes together and like lots of those movie. shows do that i know what you're talking yeah. about yeah so it was kind of cool that they actually they're, like, they're all they're, they're both like 13 minutes long they didn't do that they had Not one full episode and they broke it in half and they actually put a title up that said uh life death yeah. part one yeah well yeah yeah Is that, well, they, they ended one. they ended jubilee's chapter and they went to storm yeah, exactly. And well, I mean, that's the same thing with you know the other cartoon shows. They always do that. They always end the. No, they end, like, they actually no, they actually end the first segment or episode, and they go to the next one. Oh no no yes yeah you're yeah, correct yeah, no, no no never mind because I'm trying to remember. Some of them yeah. do. Yeah, some of them do. I, I'm trying to figure who who did it, but it, it's always weird. Anyway, no no no, no Jeff, you're right because some so cartoons it's it, it's after the second you know topic that they it, you see the end credits of the shows no no i because i remember in dexter's life yeah it doesn't like, work that way yeah it doesn't work that way because um i rarely seen like a those two like you have like a no, no but that's that is that's something that screen crush pointed out that that's the first time it's ever happened and that's been it's been a bit of history so let's move on let's move into, into x-men episode you know like into, into x-men 97 episode four mutendo life death part one so basically it starts off right at the bat with um them around the table, like having coffee, and right off the bat, like, um, Mag you know, Gambit trying to charm up to Rogue and like Magneto, like, cock blocking him and like making Rogue's coffee for her and shit like that, and whatnot, right? <laughs> and, um, it's Jubilee's birthday, right? Everything and all that, and all the different S men are all pining at what they think should happen. And Magneto's like, oh, we need to spend the whole day in the danger room working out or whatever, and whatnot, because, because, you know, we don't know what's going on with Mr. Sinister when he might pop up again. So she's hanging out with Roberto. She does a really good uh, at like um, impersonation of Magneto. Um, sees the Mutendo, thinks it's a present that Rogue gave her. Right? It comes to life and digitally, you know, uh, takes them into the dimension of Mojo World. Right? Like you know, which is the alternate dimension. The same way that they've sucked the X Men in in the previous seasons through TV. This time they're using the game. So right at the bat. They get chased by a sentinel. Jubilee actually does pretty well with it, with her powers, considering that they're really not, you know, that impressive, you know, at this point in her X-Men career. Um, you know, then they show mutant, anti-mutant thugs chasing her and Roberto. Of course, Roberto's with her, right? They're both in the game, sucked in. Um, they get, like, a Matrix phone call from, like, a uh, from an actual, like, telephone, you know, like, uh, they, and that saves them and sends them to, like, the uh, to Genosha. But like pre like peace Genosha, like you know, slavery Genosha. So now they get attacked by like the Genosha, you know, like anti mutant soldiers or whatever. And this like uh chick with like armor shows up and whatnot and saves them, right? And and they realize Jubilee realizes we're in a video game, and that's when Mojo pops in. Um and Jubilee says, Oh, you lost weight. And it's, it's like he lost weight because his the ratings are down, he says in the <laughs> third quarter or whatever, and whatnot, right? Um, and he said though he built this video game, developed it to, to where each level is based off her memories and you do die in the game, like in real life. There's a lot of matrix like shit in here. 
Yeah. Like a lot of like, um, like dr- throwbacks to the matrix, the phone call, like, you know, at the, at the, at the, the toll phone is from the matrix. You die in the game is from the matrix, right? If you die in the game, you die in the real life. That's from the matrix. Um, so what do you think, Andre? I'll start with you first of the episode at that point when um mojo jumps in and tells that you know her yeah you know you're in the game i need you for ratings or whatever or whatnot yeah so i mean i mean first up this show has done a really good job i mean so it's been a problem with live action movies or tv how comic accurate the villains are and this episode they nailed mojo correctly in, in this time of superhero you know uh, saturation and uh, it's just great to see mojo again uh, the animation on him is so fantastic. So just, you know, like blob and all that. It's just so. Oh, cool. it's way improved compared to the previous seasons. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, if you've seen the, yeah, his appearance, it's, it's always jaded. Sometimes it's, it's not as good as it should be. But yeah, this is is great. And then uh, I know this is, uh, I think, the new voice actor. He's like definitely sounds like the Mojo from that cartoon. Uh, and yeah, it makes a legit reason. I mean, we're like the fun part I always love about Mojo is that he he's always he's just, he's all about like you know viewerships and then TV. You know, like I always dug that. You know, you know, satirizing the the, the culture of, of television and you know and in our homes. And they nail it here with the video games, and it's like okay, I need to amp up my viewers by doing this video game thing because you know we're in a year of video game race now you know with the last of us being successful as a tv show the super marbles being the huge box of success and then you know recently the pullout so it's it's kind of cool that we're doing new games here and uh, and they we'll get into it it's so crazy and they nailed the graphics of like a arcade kind of game because i don't know you guys played the x-men arcade that they were, were so awesome <laughs> yeah. uh yeah <laughs> it is so great what was it like last december i uh, one of my friends uh took us in morristown uh in arcade it, 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 we played our last game we played together was the x-men arcade it was so funny <laughs> and so it was cool that they, they play along with that in this episode and i agree with you jeff i totally forgot about the matrix it's like yeah it did have some matrix stuff in like the phone uh you dying yeah kind of that uh but yeah it's it's pretty good um so the beginning is really great and plus Jubilee, uh, the the actress, um, the new voice actress that plays Jubilee is totally fantastic. She really nails that character so well. I mean, her impersonation of Neo was so funny. Um, also, like the the Perry and Ber- Roberto is really great. Uh, you know, he's another great iconic X Men character that's been well developed here. Um, we didn't mention, uh, I think last week, he's in in the 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 credits, and he and he actually took Jubilee's. Uh, yeah, he took Jubilee's spot in the credits. Yeah, in, in that fence when she's trying to run run away from the humans, like it, that was cool. Um, so yeah, so overall, I think the beginning is really fun. It's getting us into you know the the craziness that is Jubilee, not liking the you know the the new role the Magneto has, you know. Um, I did laugh when more uh you know say that joke that oh some 17 before didn't get a present and then you know my deal cuts it to the chase like my book my parents perish when i was a little boy <laughs> and like dead silence after that <laughs> 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 you well their idiot muffin it was so hilarious so um yeah i enjoyed the beginning it's it, it was so fun j rap mm-hmm. yes your thoughts are on everything in the episode up until the point where you see Mojo come in and actually tell Jubilee, yes, you're in my game, like, you know, with all the rating shit. Well, uh, one of the things that we we brought up or you guys brought up, actually, is that, uh, you know, Jubilee doesn't really have, like, her own episodes. And this no. was that, you know what I mean? So they gave, initially, this is her episode where they kind of focus on her and and the other, the young guy. What's his name again? Roberto de Costa. Reboido. Reboido. Yeah. So they fo- you know, focuses on both of them, you know, I guess because they're both like younger of the group, you know. And so um you, you know, this is kind of a, a little bit veered off of it, but not too far. The episode, like in the very original X-Men starts off with them finding a Jubilee. If you remember that, the very first X-Men, like the episode one. 
is like the story about fighting her. And then like the, the story one for this one was like them finding Roberto almost like the same way, like, you know, in trouble, like the Sentinels coming after Jubilee. And then like the, then this one, the human supremacy, yeah. human supremacists going after Roberto is they kind of have something in common, kind of like how they were both kind of fished out to join the X-Men in a way in that weird. Anyway, I just thought about that while we were talking about the episodes. Cause that's initially like, the beginning of the x-men is like kind of her episodes the very first ones um then the the moon tendo then what did it look like it looked like a playstation right it looked like one of the old school sega genesis oh like. that's what it was yeah, yeah. It looked like an old school sega genesis yeah i kind of laughed at that just kind of the uh the what they like nintendo but then it kind of looked like a sega it looked genesis. pretty good for an animated like console <laughs> or whatnot and everything it looked pretty solid i yeah. I, I mean i, I I think that's just deliberate, you know, just to focus on it so you can see it that it doesn't it doesn't look like a Nintendo. So it, you call it Moon Tendo, but in, and then if you they make it look like a Nintendo, it's supposed to be Nintendo, gonna, yes, obviously. Yeah, Nintendo, you know yeah. what I mean. They're gonna be like, it's well, play they're, out, they're playing off of nineties jo- yeah. shit. That's what they like to do <laughs> is like play off of stuff that's from the nineties. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, a lot of things that I've come across on this um whole start you know of that season, uh, episode one up until now is um and you guys kind of touched on it already um andres you know talks about how he likes some of the things they say they're pretty funny well a lot of the writing is really good oh um, yeah that that bow uh, what's that, the name he did, did a really good job the writing has been stellar the, yeah, the writing so, in episode two was like some of the best mcu writing i've i've seen in years yeah, you know, a lot of the funny stuff with Mojo, I mean, that's just good writing. It's humorous, you know what I mean? Somebody's coming up with this and and the not even if it's just for the funny stuff, but like the seriousness of, of it too, like the what you, you know, the the things that Scott Summer says, the things that Magneto, Magneto says like in episode like, you know, uh I've got the, I've gotten teary-eyed twice during during, during watching the episodes. I have j Rat. Well, you know, that and that's okay. You know, I think their goal is to make you feel something, you know. Um, I definitely, you know, they definitely threw us for a a curveball, which is what Marvel needed in episode five. They I've I've heard crazy things saying that episode five is like the best thing since you know don't go too far ahead, my friend. Yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm not but we're covering you know, episode five next week. That's what we're talking I know. about. And I'll I'll be there for that one too if you'll have if y'all okay. me on because I yeah, you can have on. things. You'll, but, you'll um, be on. you know, uh, just kind of what I meant to say was like just a lot of the writing, um, even on this episode that, um, and I'm going to use Andres's exact words because he said it perfectly, perfectly. He said this was their, their weakest episode, but it was not a bad episode. Um, and I, I think he said it perfectly again. So uh, up until that point when they, when they get there and they, before they, I guess before they get in the game, is that what you said, right? What I think yeah. about it, I, I think it was good. It started off fine. Well, what does it say to you that that in the first two episodes, it's Bo DeMaio writing solo, right? In episodes mm-hmm. three and four, it's Bo DeMaio and Charlie Feldman doing the writing. Then it's episode five, it's back to Bo DeMaio. Does that, that, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It does, actually, yeah, because uh, episode three and episode four – are, are the more, the more, are the more fillerish episodes out of like the five? They are. They're like, yes. I, I didn't want to use the word filler, but they kind of are. The fillerish. Like, fillerish. Filler, they got that fi- the filler episode feeling. One and two are like a continuation of each other, right? Like you you watch episode one and you watch episode two, and it's like that leaves off. It continues off of that. Episode three kind of takes a weird turn with Mister Sinister. In Jean Grey, like, well, where did this come out of? You know, uh, the bait or the it was the episode two where the bait, like, uh, Jean comes through the door, right? Yeah, and they're like, what the heck, you know? And then in that episode three is just like a turn from from that, and then episode four is a turn from that, uh, which is okay because I think, um, I think the other X Men, the old X Men, did that anyway too. That was not something uncommon that that every episode was different with the well, X Men. Get you know back, I mean? get, get back onto the first part of, of of the episode. What are your What are your thoughts on on how they set this up with Mojo and whatnot and everything? And and, and the, the and, you know focus on that that initial you know like uh, opening sequence and whatnot where Robert and Jubilee get sucked into the game. 
focusing. Okay. I liked it. I, I it was fine with me. I, I didn't think anything abnormal. I like that they took a video game approach, like the like you said, 90s, 90s arcade type video game. Some of it was a lot of up to date with references from from things from since then up until now. Overall, good. I mean, I don't have anything else to say more other until we go further. Okay. I've got some X-Men 97 episode four scenes. Take some cream with it. Ah, uh, thanks, Remy. But our new boss beat you to the pot. I'll take a cappuccino if you just take an orders. No. Luckily, I am giving them. After breakfast, the X-Men will report to the danger room for drills. We must be ready should Mr. Sinister resurface. Jubilee will see far more birthdays should she learn to master her powers to face a world that despises her. Someone's daddy didn't get him a pony for his sweet 16th. How do you want to celebrate the big 18th, huh? Let's go to the arcade. It'll be just like old times. What do we think? What's wrong with just one day where I don't have to freak out about the professor or Jean and her clone or Cyclops and his latest control issue? They aren't even here because they just had to go play mutant politics at the United Nations. The only people who hate video games are bad at video games. Never even heard of a Motendo. <laughs> How long were we playing? I assume I won. Hey! Let's go! How did we get downtown so fast? What if there's cameras around? My parents could see me on TV. Do you really think everyone is focused on you? Yes! I was trapped here with Storm. Gambit, too and a bunch of other mutants, all enslaved to build by Bolivar Trap. System error. We are totally in a video game. Mojo here, your primetime psycho interdimensional alien TV producer who feeds off ratings. Putting the X-Men through overly complicated death traps to entertain my slaves. Looks like you've been Dieting? You noticed! Got some nip, some chuck. You're the star! Player. Every level is based off your own memories. So you're my gamer girl in a gamer world. I'll dominate the galaxies and the 18 to 45 age demographic. If you die in the game, you die in real life, but... Stakes. seeing this place on the news with me and my okay that's perfect that was a perfect montage because that's, that takes us into the episode part of the episode where she actually enters the game right the first level is the sentinels of course she kicks their ass right um the second level uh, roberto's kind of helping out too a little bit the second level is the savage land and that's saran you know that they're that they're that they're fighting over there then uh um, you see spiral with all the arms and whatnot working for mojo right um i like spiral so the final stage is magneto and roberto's health gets low right and jubilee uses like video game strategy to take on magneto and extra life pops up right which of course comes from the mysterious benefactor and she gives it to roberto he that that brings roberto's health back turns out magneto's still alive um but it's alternate version of jubilee that pops up to save the day she was a beta tester that's a digital copy of Jubilee that Mo Mojo used for the game. She hacked her way out of the game before they could delete her. They talk, right, and everything and whatnot, and have this profound discussion before Mojo comes out in, like, um, quasi-digital form to, like, be the final boss, basically, and fight them. After, like, you know, um, the, you know Jubilee and, uh, and the other chick, uh, other Jubilee, like, basically take out Magneto, or the other chick does. Um, so what do you think, J Rat? What are your thoughts on that section of the episode where she actually goes in the game with Roberto and her report her rapport with Roberto? And then what do you think of this mysterious Jubilee digital copy of Jubilee character? 
uh, yeah, at first uh, when you know that character had came out, and then uh, you don't know who it is, and then they, they she took off her helmet, and I was like, that's Jubilee, but like older. It's an old Jubilee. You know, I, I didn't understand that it was the uh, game version of it up until I guess they explained it. You know, uh, uh, later on, I thought that was kind of interesting. That was pretty cool. Um, it again, the episode is like a, a kind of get to know Jubilee, a whole type of thing from beginning to the mid game. You kind of see her abilities. She gets to know Roberto. They have some type of like bond from the very first episode up until this one. And they just you, uh, how do you say? They're just they're they're having a bond, and I don't know if it's just because they're both like young X Men. I don't know if she's older than him or he he's older or younger than her. What the case is, the same age. Uh, older, I think. but you know, it's yeah, a focus older. on both of them, huh? Is he older? Or she's a, yeah, she's older. I think it doesn't matter, yeah. baby. She's eighteen now. She's she's on the market. Oh yeah, you know what? Yeah. See, he, she's eighteen, right? Okay, so. Yeah. And this is a continuation, right? I'm thinking in my head, old X Men. You know, it's been a bunch of years now, and you know, I'm thinking she's, you know, in her 40s now. You know, but that's not the case because continuation off of it. So, uh, it, I I don't know what I don't know exactly what they're doing with them, but they are developing some type of bond because they are since they're younger, they're hanging out with each other. He's probably the same age or, or older. Uh, now that I think about it, I don't know. But uh, the episode of this, the episode where, you know, they're going through the, the levels and then the, the, the way they make it look kind of like the old um, the old video games where they're fighting and they're walking through it. I thought that was cool. That was funny. It, it was just done right. It was done well, you know, and I couldn't say enough about it. it it's just a filler episode, but done right. All the music had like uh, video game sounds added to it. If you noticed or whatever, whatnot, yeah. like they added like video game digital effects to like music and stuff like that, and whatnot. What'd you think, Andres? What'd you think of that part of the episode? Yeah, well, I mean, this is the part that was the most exciting was the the video game aspects. <laughs> you know, it was great to see like the recaps of Jubilee and her adventures in the early days of the X Men, as you know, because Jamin does bring a really good point that it's funny that you know. Roberto is sort of the Jubilee for this show, you know, the point of view for the X-Men, where you know, Jubilee was that for the, you know, the Witcher show. And it, it's really cool to see that here, you know, seeing, you know, the Sentinels, you know, the, the first episode for season one, the Night of the Sentinels. So that was kind of cool, seeing the the humanity of friends, the the the, the human terrorist group. And then after that, we see the uh, Genosha, you know, the uh, when it was taken over from Bobo uh, tracks to build more sentinels during season one, if you remember that, uh, which is great. So, uh, as uh, Stubley, um, uh, you know, Tony Roberto, with that, um, this is the part because last week, you know, Jeff, you brought up, you know, how annoying Roberta is like Roberta is, is not using his powers here, and I like that clip when he's a, like, like he's such a narcissist kind of person, like. Mm -hmm. the fact he, Oh, he thinks the, the world is around him. He finally used his powers in this episode. Yeah, but that was like towards the end of it. So it's like, come on. Like, this kid is in danger. Like, you know, Jubilee's not going to help you. And He's really powerful, too. That's the thing. Well, also, Jubilee is powerful, too. I mean, look at what she did to that. No, she's, she's not as powerful as Sunspot. Yeah, well. No. I, no, no, not like in a Mego level, right? Like, I think some, Sunspot is Sunspot's adult. very powerful. Yeah, but at least like yeah. you can absorb solar energy and then project it. Yeah, but well, yeah, that that's true. But you know, but we don't see that enough in the in in the live action stuff because of you know, technical difficulties. They're eventually, but, they're going to show though. No, I know, but in the I don't anime, think he's a, I don't think he's a mega level though. He's not a mega level, but he's a powerful mutant. He's like compared yeah. to Jubilee, he he, yeah. he 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 can do more damage with his um his blasts. Right, then Jubilee yeah, can with her with her pyrotechnic stuff. No, mm -hmm. but she can actually. To be fair, though, oh Jubilee, no, no. It, well, in the comics, she's evolved as a character. She's done a lot of stuff. Yeah. For a while there, she was with the New Warriors and whatnot, yeah. wearing a suit, like with yeah. using weapons and shit like that and whatnot, and having super strength and shit like that. Yeah, and and, and to be fair, though, we're in a, like a video game simulation. But like, if you if we had a chance to like show like Jubilee this powerful, like. 
what we saw towards the end, like it, it really shows how Jubilee can be powerful. If she can be powerful, yes. She just needs yeah, to learn yeah. how to use her powers, like a lot of other ice men. And she's also a um a, a, like Olympia Olympus Olympic level gymnast, too. Oh yeah, that's true. I, I do remember that. Um, but yeah. So you know, seeing you know, seeing more of like Jubilee, you know, getting from far where we saw in the Richard City with her powers is very impressive. I mean, by the way, her 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 powers display here with the animation is like way improvement from you know the original <laughs> show and i just always it's just incredible it's like i mean from episode one with her dancing and, and you know throwing her like you know, powers up you know dancing you know wow that was very impressive but here seeing her doing you know all the action where her powers is incredible but also i was very impressed about the animation how they replicate the rk kind of like place your know, movements when we see the savage land briefly uh when they were doing that segment that was so awesome yeah it's like street fighter where like your character yeah, just walk right across the screen you know what i mean like yeah. in, a, in, a, in a direct in a straight direction <laughs> yes it, it was so cool like this that's how much i love about this show is like they really nailing the 90s stuff and but also the comedy with mojo and spiral was also funny it's like spiral get rid of this virus uh, this bug <laughs> you know it's like this is what you do when you kill the, the tech support, which that light killed me. I was like, <laughs> I'm so perfect. He's like, you kill all his tech support team because they couldn't, you know, get rid of this, you know, bug that's they're running out. Um, yeah. So, uh, what was the end point, Jeff? Uh, the, is it the reveal? When, of the when Mojo comes out to be like to be to basically become the final boss fight. Yeah, because I want to bring this up. Um, I knew this was gonna happen. Um, the actress that did voice Jubilee from the '90s cartoon, she actually voiced that older version. That was the part I actually like. Yeah, because we have a new Jubilee voice voice actor actress now yeah. too. No. Yeah, and as I brought up in this episode, you know, she, the new actress has done a really great job with this Jubilee. But it was really sweet and great to hear the old the old G. Jubilee actress. She has a name. The OG Jubilee is called uh good luck pronouncing this shit. Her name is um uh, uh it's it starts with an A. It's uh abs abscis abscissa. It's abscissa court. That's her name. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I think she was she like like I like at first you didn't know that was the old tree because those two sound so like a like and that's so impressive i don't know if you guys had that like she, like yeah it was she, obvious that was jubilee from jump yeah she had jubilee earrings on yeah <laughs> i meant the voice not the look sir <laughs> but yes that's true yes the the, the you know the earrings it's just like oh yeah yeah that, that's jubilee. but it's, it was funny it was funny when they say this the state like the the same time the the what they were saying at the same time that killed me it was like oh that's jubilee that was funny um yeah so and then you know getting to mojo being the the final boss fight was really great because uh like he got you know back again which was great it was kind of weird to see mojo skinny which was just so bizarre i was like oh my god that that's horrifying like please get him back to his chubby self <laughs> in the comics so yeah i'm very excited to talk about the final fight because that that final fight was so amini like level of kaiju like fight which was awesome well they all participate in the final battle like you know some, it's it's mostly um the digital jubilee copy that does most of the damage against mojo and the fighting but yeah. she's got she's got hella oh, skills yeah. with her powers but but sunspot gets in there and gets a good shot in there against uh mojo too and yeah. then it is jubilee and her copy that team up right and like more the mold their powers together and blast Mojo like unconscious or whatever, whatnot. And then Spiral sends them back to Earth. And then yeah. they have their big kiss and everything, whatnot, you know, which was really cute. <laughs> um, and then that's the end of that segment before we go into the storm part of the episode. So what do you think, Andres? What are your thoughts on the, the final battle with the with Mojo? Well, I mean, first of uh, I was so happy that we made Metro as the final boss because that was cool and seeing him this big huge thing because I mean Mojo is powerful I mean he is a cosmic you know alien villain um so it was really cool that he was the the final boss so I, I I I dug how you know we're about to find Lisa's powers finally which was great I actually like how cool they emanate his powers just like the comic books how he's covered like in black and 
you know, and you see some of his like fiery, like in bubbles. He can only then, fly if he actually like flames on completely. Like he can only fly when he actually like goes yeah. into like complete sunspot mode. Yeah. I I think that's I think this show is kind of slowly gradually rebuts it to learn his powers. Like he's not yet that point of flying and all that, you know. I, I just don't think he's there yet until we'll, we get to the end of the series. Kind of like it. Monica Rambeau in the Marvels. Yeah, exactly. Which made no or, sense at all. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. And then, like, how she, how she handled her powers, too. It's like... Uh, whatever. Anyway. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, the Marvels <laughs> is something else. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, so it was great. And then it was great to see the two Jubilees join together and, and form this huge, like, like cycle, like, like firework. The hit mojo was really great. That was a cool, like, and boss, like, power. Like, that was really video game. Like, that's something I could totally see in, like, an arcade game that we play. So that was cool. Um, I said in the private chat uh, of, like, the 90s Nintendo console, and it, the one we saw for the Menten the Nintendo kind of looks a little bit of it. It's just, it's almost like a combination of the, because the joysticks, it's a combination of the different 90s console of, of the tennis like stick you usually use. Um, but yeah, so overall, I really dug that the final buzz. It was great. And it was great to see Spiral you know, sending back. Um, it was funny when they kiss. It was really great. I, I think they're doing something with that, those two characters, because they are the younger X Men. I, I can definitely see Jubilee be in the New Mutants and for this kind of movie. You think about it, because she is a young mutant. And I can see her. Like built like a, a version of a new mutants in this universe that makes a lot of sense, you know. Uh, just saying. Um, so I I think that makes sense, and her being in the relationship with, with Sunspot makes a lot of sense. So I, I think there's potential what they're doing here, and I, I really like it. I do like their pairing because she's the only young X Men in the like the older X Men members we have in the show. So um, and you know this final dance uh. When they were kissing, it was kind of cool. While she was kissing, you see her powers like activate, like like her <laughs> like fireworks. <laughs> it was like that was cool. That was very fun. So overall, I dug this segment of Jubilee. It was great to finally get a centric Jubilee episode uh, in the perfect way, just arcade. Which that was oh my god, there was so that was such a genius way. It's like hmm, what what we should do for a Jubilee secret? She likes arcade. She likes blowing things up. She doesn't like authority all that mixed together in this episode and that, <laughs> that's what you get and they nailed it so it well fun. jubilee basically just to give a real quick jubilee's mutant powers allow her to generate and control articulate quasi animate transitory plasmoids which take the form of multicolored globules streamers and sparkles <laughs> and ex explode at her mental command mm -hmm. she can vary their power and intensity from a multitude of fireworks capable of temporarily blinding others to a powerful detonation capable of much destruction Although Jubilee can absorb this energy back into her body without harm, her eyes are not immune to her own light burst. She typically wears large sunglasses to protect her vision. Jubilee has the potential to detonate matter on the, the molecular level, although she fears this upper limit of her powers and does not explore it. Jubilee also possesses natural fizzy shields, which makes her thoughts slippery and render her almost invisible to telepaths who don't know precisely what to look for. So she actually has a, like an, an immunization to like Jean Grey's and Professor Xavier's and whatnot, when they try to look for her, she she's hard to find and target and whatnot. But th that's her, what, what her actual powers are. What do you think, Jared? What are your what are your thoughts on the on the final battle with Mojo and then the kiss and everything and all that? It was fun. It, it's it's all around just a fun episode. It's different from the rest. I can't stress about the uh, you know like what they're doing with them, um, the kissing, it, you know. To go and talk about the X Men, if if you watch the older X Men, X Men has always been like a um, like a drama, like a soap opera, like adult of, too, like an adult kind of orientated. Yeah, like I, I mean, watching it as a kid, you know, you, you, they always had talked about love interests, you know, Dream, oh yeah, Jean, yeah, you know, Jean Grey, Scott Summers, the uh, the the love triangle, you know, between Wolverine and and Jean Grey, you know, uh, in the older the older episodes. So there was always like that love aspect and they kind of just can are continuing it here. They're just bringing another love interest into it. Somehow I'm not surprised 
you know that that's just how the the x-men are they explore those areas because this is a it's a it's a soap opera the x-men is a soap opera they have their battles but there's a lot of um there's a lot of um what's that word i'm looking for dialogue this is a cartoon with a lot of dialogue you know conversation of it it's not all just well, they all have they all have real lives you know you're not they're mm-hmm. all real people you know exactly exactly you know and this episode is a little different from that that's what makes this makes this episode different from like oh hey let's go into the video game and you jump into it you get to know the character uh they, they, you see some bonding with them but it's more of a fun it's more of a fun episode and and, and it's like the video game stages right you're just going through the stages, you get into the levels, and then the final boss. It just made it a, a, a fun episode, but it, it, it's a little different from how the other episodes are because if you look back on the first three, it's, it's you know a lot of dialogue. There's some action in there because it's X Men. You got to have some action in there somehow, or some type of suspense, you know. And then I mean, after episode four, it carries on, you know, to back to the dialogue and stuff like that. So this one differs because of of it just being more fun. What's up? Whoever said my name on there with a bunch of exclamation marks. What's going on? It says Facebook it's user. That's Cyber. Cyber? Yeah. Why does it always yeah. do that when it says... Uh, I don't uh, know. It, it does that for some reason. Well, you should What's have. going on, Cyber? Actually, if he... if he Like, actually, Cyber should do it on the YouTube. If he doesn't YouTube, you know, come on YouTube, we can see his name. But for some reason, when he does it on Facebook... Facebook. It does the same thing for me too. Whenever I, I I see y'all live on Facebook, and I I you know I try to like jump in a little bit. It keeps saying Facebook user, and I'm like, oh, like yeah. I want them to know it's me, you know. And I gotta drop those little hints. Well, you know, you know they, it's definitely a fun a, a fun part of the episode is the jubilee part, but it's a good contrast to the storm part that's a lot more sullen. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know that this episode or this this episode will translate into anything else down the line what with mojo the... oh no i don't think so no. not, not you know what season. i mean not the season no no it's not I, gonna be yeah i mean mojo is always the fun filler episodes that they always want to do so mm-hmm. whenever we have another filler episode i i can see mojo coming back either or not it really depends yeah we're gonna see apocalypse and mr sinister from a, like like in the next couple episodes i have a feeling um but let's move into the next the next part of the episode, and that is, of course, Life Death Part One. We sit, we see Ford serving, um, you know, serving dinner to Storm Aurora, right? Who's still powerless. Forge, of course, is helping her. Storm and Forge talk, and he explains his mutant abilities and some of his background to her and whatnot. They go out and ride horses together and shit and everything and whatnot. She sees an <laughs> owl. They talk about the owl and everything and whatnot. And he tries to use a machine. To reverse her powers back on, but it doesn't work. Um, you know, she breaks down, she's all upset. Storm asks Forge, Why are you trying so hard to like fix me to help me? And he admits that he used his mutant abilities to create technology that was then used to make anti mutant technology, right? Like, you know, and Storm gets pissed off. Forge says, I love you and everything and whatnot, right? Storm slaps him and, you know, says some typical Storm poetic shit. And she takes off and take, she books off on a horse. And I'll stop there. Go to you, J-Rap. What are your thoughts on that big chunk of episode I just gave you with that with Storm and, and his, her new relationship with Forge? Yeah, I remember Forge. I just don't remember his relation to Storm in, in, the, in the X-Men because it's been so they, long. Like, they had a relationship. Is that what it was like? Uh, they they had a love. Uh, they had they had a love relationship. Yeah, another one. Again, again, yep. another, yeah. Um, y- you know, it, it just has to. Was he a time? He wasn't a time traveler, was he? Yeah, he's a time traveler because he, he is it, right. It, it, his other appearances in the show, it's in the future when he goes like uh, Cable and Bishop and shit like that. Whatnot. That's right. Well, I, Ian, <sighs> we see two versions of him in different timeline. One in the future in Days of Future Past, and then we. We see him in the present time when he's with the X Factor, that another mutant team that the government has. That's usually when we see Forge. So, I know I'm not even aware of any of my any of my X Men shit. Cyber, I'm an idiot. A guy, yeah, and usually pretty good of like putting something. I know, I know. I can't. Yeah, I, I, I have all this X Men gear, and I'm not even wearing any of it. 
Yeah, I'm the only one. Oh, that's it. I'm changing. Guys. I'm changing it well, up now. I got. I got this guy right here. Finish oh, your yeah. thoughts. Finish your thoughts, dear. I'm. I'm kind of finished. You know, honestly, th- honestly, this episode was kind of just a run through for me. It almost. I hate to say this as a as an X Men fan, you know, but I almost like was lost interest after watching it. I didn't hate it. I just was just like, mm, okay, you know. I, but I, I just, yeah. you know, and, and then like again, I continued to watch the X Men. I watched the other episode, you know, following up to it, you know, because I'm still gonna watch it. But it wasn't as good as the other one, so I was just like, ah, what are we doing? Okay, yeah. this is this is kind of cool. I don't I don't mind it, but it wasn't like anything that like grabbed me and pulled me. You know what I mean? And you said you watch episode five, right? Yes, I did. And yeah, okay. no, no, I understand where you're coming from there. Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you compared that to episode five, it's like 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 apple to oranges, really. Like, and uh, yeah, clearly, for I, sure. Like, first off, I appreciate they did two like storylines to see. Like, I always feel like there's more to tell. But I feel like they should have saved this part as just a full on episode. I didn't know why they had to make a two parter, like because episode six is the part two of this, and I was like wondering why you did that. You know, like you couldn't like wait for the next two episodes to get to that. You know, it, because for me, like I I I, I was upset with you. I was kind of engaged if you weren't feeling it for the Julie episode. Which I would, I, I get it. You know, she's the young kid, and Mojo is not kind. Of one of those weird <laughs> villains, right? This is your cup of tea. The the more serious, you know, melodrama X Men. Right? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I've always been a fan of, of just like the the drama part of it. You know, like yeah. The first an episode, first two episodes for me were like they did it. You know what I mean? They they did what they were supposed to do, and I felt it. It felt real X Men ish. You know. Yeah, and here, you know, I. It's just setting up the, the you know, uh, I, I guess they're setting up maybe Storm will get her powers soon. I don't know how, but, you know, with the villain that we sort of got, I was, I just, I was hoping to see Shadow King. Like, Shadow King is a great. I, did, I didn't go that far, motherfucker. Or not that far yet. Shut up. Let me talk <laughs> to her. God, don't let me drop my one F on. Just like the X-Men movies. Before Logan and Deadpool. Anyway, anyway, no, no. Let, let me, let, let me. I, I'm, I'm saying like, if, if I, I kind of wish they maybe had a villain here to start with that, like Shadow King, maybe heard the storm loses powers, you know? Because that's the thing. It's like this is very like, kind of like, you know, typical setup of like their relationship, you know, Forge and Storm, which is kind of interesting. I mean. I, you know, it's from the comic books, you know, I get that, but I I just feel like it's not as engaging as the, the Roberto and Jubilee relationship, where that's more fun and, like, because I, I don't think, that, that's that's totally new. Well, like, they're trying, like, this, this part of the episode is supposed to be, like, a powerful, like, sullen, you know, like, storm is broken, yeah. you know, kind of thing, but, while, while they're also, like, falling in love. Yeah, but... I, I think that's my issue is that they don't spend enough time of that. That's the problem. I, I, I feel like that's maybe the reason that it's kind of so uninteresting is because we don't spend enough time of like, you know, storm feeling that like loss of her powers. Oh yeah. I would, I wouldn't have anything. If I was like, if I like, I have nothing to say about that section. I, there's nothing really to say about it. What is there to say? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know, mm-hmm. and then, and then like, you know, I mean, and then basically, she rides on her horse. All of a sudden, she like she's riding her horse, and then she ends up going down into this like in under the ground and this like you know demon hell or whatever or whatnot. Now she's back at the house with Forge, and some demon comes around in the corner and shit and whatnot, bites Forge up and shit and whatnot, and everything, and grabs Storm up and shit and says, "I'm the adversary," and that's the end of the episode. So, what do you think about that, Joey? It was a, it was a little confusing. I don't know anything about the adversary. I don't remember enough of it either, to be honest with you, or know enough to, to give a comment on it. All I know is it's a side story. Where we have a side story. You I know, guess it was a. I guess it was a part of this like whole like run of the comics or whatever, whatnot, with Forge and Storm, with her getting her powers back or whatever, whatnot. The whole life death thing or whatever, whatnot. This demon is somebody that like fucks with Forge specifically. Like he, like she, it's it's known to be like fuck with Forge. 
Okay, it, 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 may, it may come out in episode six that he even knows this demon. Yeah. Quite possibly. Was, yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the, the, the notes I have. Yeah, it's connected to Forge. Um, I, I kind of wish we knew, like, I, I kind of wish they maybe foreshadowed it during the episode, like, it was following Forge to, like, hint a little bit that it's connected to Forge, you know, but they didn't do that. Like, that's the first no. thing. J. Rep, what do you what do you think? Do you have any do you have any final thoughts on the on the on that part of the episode before we wrap up and do our ratings? Final thoughts on the episode. Um, mm, mm, I, it's really I, I don't know really what to say about it. You know, it it doesn't it doesn't do it for me for like the rest of the episodes from one to three. And then after scene five, like I just can't put it on a scale. It's, it's okay. Right now. It, it's okay. It's it's okay. It was better. It, till you, it's be, it was a better episode until you see episode five. It, I mean, it wasn't a even without seeing, especially seeing episode five. But before seeing episode five, seeing that one, it wasn't. It wasn't great. Now it was again. It was okay. It just wasn't the best one for me. Um, I love X Men, so I'll watch anything X Men. Uh, on it and I won't uh how do you say it tell people to not watch it but I you know I can tell when something is true to like how how the other stories are this one just felt a little a little bit off and it's okay it's fine it's different let's hope when they do the live action X-Men MC uh, the X-Men and the MCU they 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 do they do the Jubilee character justice finally in live action hmm yeah that would be interesting yeah. You know, what do you think? Oh. You want to give give us a rating, J. Rat, on the episode? Six and a half, which okay. I think is 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 modest. I think it's above above good, but not like great. Andres, your final thoughts and your rating, sir. Sure. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, this this episode was definitely the most self upbeat of the X-Men episode. Like, first up, we didn't mention how, like, Forge mentioned that he built those, like, you know, uh, mutant <laughs> weapons. Yeah, <laughs> I mentioned it. Oh, okay, you did? Oh, yes, you did. He did, yeah. Yeah, okay, because I, well, because it was funny, because when Storm hears about it, she does the very typical soap opera thing of, like, the woman slaps the person and, like, oh. She slaps him when Forge says that she, he loved her. He loved her. <laughs> and that was... I that moment I was so happy to see that. That was so so proper. That was something I definitely see the X Men ninety show would do. <laughs> it's so dramatic. I I was just laughing so hard. That was so funny. And um, the adversary seems like a legit in street villain. Like it reminded me of the Shadow King. If anyone knows who the Shadow King is, um, this very demonic kind of villain. Um, of course, Shadow King is a mutant. Um, where this one, it seems like a more demonic, supernatural creature. So that's interesting to see. Um, um, yeah, I, I I appreciate the change of pace of having two storylines. Like from other cartoon shows that I brought up, as, as all of us have seen in the 90s from Cartoon Network or you know, Nickelodeon and whatnot. But I feel like that disrupt the pace and disrupt your like already familiar of the episodes we've been watching where it's been all singular focus of the storyline we'll be doing for the X-Men 97 show. So for this, I'm going to give it like a eight out of 10. It wasn't that bad. I, I, I think I, for, for it, it's mostly because Jubilee, I like at least Jubilee got her shine. I like Jubilee too. Yeah. So I, I'm going to give it an eight out of 10. And the second part is not that bad, but I mean, is it setting up for that, the next chapter, which, to be honest, should be just the full episode, which I don't understand why they split it up, but whatever. But I give it because of that slap, because that was funny as hell, and, I, and that's something you definitely see yourself on the show. I'll yeah, give it. A, I'll give it a six point two five. The the hmm. storm the storage form section of the episode does nothing for me. Look, uh, what Cyber he said he still got to fi Cyber. If you haven't fi finished the original, it, it's. <laughs> I just watch it during the day and grab a Red Bull because it might <laughs> it's not the same as watching it as a kid as watching it older. <laughs> so it yeah. might, you might fall asleep if you don't you know yeah. you know if you start paying attention too much. <laughs> um oh. this 
Oh, sorry. Um, no, no, no. I, oh, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. You know. Okay, okay. Well, no, Cyber, if you're going to, you know, bench watch it, just watch the opponent episodes that, like, are the multi-arc the multi -arc episodes. He's watching it all the way through. Watch episode to episode. He's watching the whole thing. He doesn't have to see the filler episodes. Like, he doesn't have to see the bunch of watch. He's watching it with the wife. Oh, that's true. If you're watching the wife, then I understand that. Uh, Cyber. Uh, Jeff? Shish. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Nothing. It's just the comedic effect. I'm like, okay, sir. I understand, Jeff. That's what, Cyber. Oh, my God. I'm mixing your name. Whatever. You know, All right. Let's get J-Rat out of here. So he's got to, I'm sure he's probably got to work in the morning. J-Rat. I, I do. Let me pull uh, up your plugs, brother. I've got, no, no, I've got, no. Wait, I, wait. I, hold, I, on, I, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Time out. Time out. I, I can do... The review for you. Are you gonna play the trailer for this? The the Joker. We're gonna, we're gonna play Joker two trailer. React to it. We're gonna do the tr the Romulus alien Romulus trailer. React to it. And then we're out of here. So are you gonna do the Joker trailer and then talk about that and then you're gonna do the other one or are you gonna do both at the same time? Because you do both at the same time. Probably. No, I'm, no, I'm gonna do no, individually no. one at a time. Joker two and then I'm I'll, gonna do Alien Romulus. I'll, I'll do the Joker Joker two reaction with okay. you. Okay, you stick around I'm on board. for Joker two then. All right, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. All right, I'm gonna play. I'm playing it right now. All right, I never saw the first Joker film, so I'm gonna put that out right now. I don't know what to make of that trailer. What do you think, Jarrett? You never wait. You said you never seen the. First I never saw Joker? the first Joker film. No, you haven't seen. Are you kidding me? No, I never saw. We, it. we haven't seen that or Logan. That's the crazy thing. I didn't see Logan either. No. Uh, okay, Logan. Maybe I can, I can't even understand that. Maybe no, I definitely can't understand Logan since you're a Marvel guy for sure. But Joker, I know maybe? I've got to see the movies. I know, I know. What do you think That's of the trailer? True. Uh, I'm okay with it. I like it. I like the song. What the 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 version of that? Yeah, what the world needs now. Yeah, yeah. So it's just an it's an interesting song to choose, you know, because um. They're they're um, typically the Joker's a murder. They're murderers, murderous couple, you know. And to speak of like what the world needs, love, and they don't bring love, you know. But um, the just everything in there, I'm okay with it being some type of musical. I, I'm I want to see how that works, you know. I mean, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. You know? Come on, she's a singer. Yeah, she's, She's an awesome singer. I love Lady Gaga. Oh, me too. too. I, 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 I love, love Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga. Oh, we know you do, Andres. Oh, I love her. I love her as an actress. I love her as a singer. You know, so uh, I'm okay with. I, did, I, did, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see that. I didn't see that other movie she did either, where she played the country singer or whatever, or whatnot. Like I didn't no, see she, that or the rock singer. Yeah, no, she did a great job in that movie too. I saw some of the music for some of the songs that she did with the, what's his name, Bradley Cooper. They were really good. Mm -hmm. They sounded good. Yeah. Yep. They sure did. What do you think, Andres? Sure what do you think? What do you think of the Joker Two trailer? Well, I love the trailer. Well, so I guess you know I'm the one. I, I actually seen the first Joker movie. I, I actually really liked the Joker movie. It was really great. It's one of the. It's a very good psychological, character driven super villain movie that I kind of wish the Sony films. Uh, should be you know and i think the joker is that good example of that that you can't make a superman villain be good by doing this much more deeper uh you know in depth compared to other superhero films and you know similar to logan or loki the tv show like i think loki and joker it's like those combination um <laughs> oh my god cyber really cyber don't be jet right now uh, that's a plus for sure yeah, that would be a plus for sure. <laughs> um, but anyway, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was shocked the Joker got so many Oscar nominations. I mean, it, it went for a billion. The first Ray R film to do that, which was crazy. So for this trailer, I was so hooked. It, it just felt like the first film. I mean, the cinematography uh, for those shots are fantastic. There is just the level like the Batman from 2022 with Robert Pattinson. And yeah, I love Joaquin Phoenix. I don't know what you guys think about him as an actor. He's really great. I was so happy. Very talented. Yeah. Tier one actor. Yeah, amazing actor. I was so happy he won his Oscar for the Joker. And so I was just happy to see that. And I'm very curious about Lady Gaga as Holly Quinn. That's the one thing I'm very excited for. Um, I love Lady Gaga. 
she has become a great actress and I love her music, so she's a great singer. Um, very curious how they're gonna do this new version of Polly Quinn in this, you know, Joker universe, basically. Um, you know, because I, I do like Margot Robbie's version of Polly Quinn. She's great. Yeah, um, she is great. Yeah, so I'm I'm very curious where they're gonna do with her. And 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 one thing I appreciate about these movies, the Jokers, uh, is the the very unreliable narr like focus of the Joker. Like they nailed that perfectly, like from Batman the Killer Joke. So I think the trailer was great. Like it's well edited. The music from uh the world needs now that's from Bart uh Raxaberry. Uh, it's seen by Tom Jones. If anyone knows who's who's seen that version, is from Tom Jones. Um, it, 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 like they nailed the rhythm. So um, yeah. So I, I'm very excited for this movie now. Um, I you know I'm excited for Deadpool Wolverine, but this like now it's like my second anticipation comic book movie for this year. You know, well, it's I mean, definitely it was definitely an interesting looking trailer. I'll, I'll give it. I'll I'll give the trailer credit for that. It does look interesting. It looks it looks worth watching. J. Rat, you have any final thoughts on the trailer before we cut you out of here, sir? Final thoughts on the trailer. It it looks good. I, I need to see another trailer because if I if I try to come, you need to see it another. You need to see it again. I, well, well, not this trailer. No, 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 not this trailer. I, oh, you gotta see it. You gotta see another trailer. I, I need to see some more films or more shots of different um, of it. So. The very first time I saw the very first trailer for the Joker, mm -hmm. I, I was like, wow, this looks amazing. And I knew, and I told everybody day one when that trailer came out, I said, this movie right here, this is going to be the movie. This is going to be a really good movie. And everyone was like, ah, nah, it's not going to be a good movie. And then, and then it came out. I saw it. It was amazing. It was beautiful. I told everybody this is my favorite movie of all time. I said, Joaquin Phoenix is the best Joker. And and they want so many uh, Oscars and nomination, whatever it was that they won, best actor. I, I don't remember, and, and it was spot on. And I was very excited to see this trailer. Um, I like it, and I wasn't uh, I wasn't upset when they said, "Oh, it's going to be a musical," because I saw that that turned a lot of people off in like comments and reviews that you see online. Like, it's going to be a musical. I don't know how that's going to be. Um, I think it's going to be okay. I think it, it. I think as long as it doesn't stay the same as the first one and it's different. I think that's, what's going to make it better because it's yes. not going to just, you know, it's not going to be the same. You're not going to get the same thing. It's going to twist, throw you for a twist. And I think that's, what's going to make it good. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Trevor. That's my, my, my whole thing that I got from this. This is a completely different movie from the first one. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm interested. Well, j Rat, here, I'm going to pull you up your plug, sir. So we can get you out of here, brother, before we play alien Romulus. You put um, my OnlyFans? Yeah, you're yep, your OnlyFans, sir. I promise. <laughs> there you go, sir. There, there is your J Reds 2000 Podcast Odyssey page. Go at it, sir. What do you have to say about the podcast Odyssey these days? Uh, you know, it's there. Look, see, I posted a couple of things from the episode ah, five. I Spoilers. See that. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um you know, if you're into in the podcast, you like hearing a couple of funny people talk. You like talking about, uh, you know, science, hearing things, theories, shows. You know, just give me a like. You know, I'm into the, uh, you know, the current, the current things that are going on. You know, stop by, say hello. There you go. All right, J. Rat. We'll see you later, brother. It was good to see cool. you, man. Thanks, thanks, Jeff, aka True Knowledge, Andres, the pop culture guy. And why yeah. did I call you Time Cop again? Oh, it's just a running gag they gave us. He's a, he, time he, he's a time traveler, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why they call me Time Cop. I got different titles. Time Cop, Time Lord, uh, uh, Bat Lord uh, from uh, Rayman from Blues and Chill. So, <laughs> other titles. All right, j Rock. Man of different to, names. Good to see you yeah. smiling, brother. Thank you for having me on, guys. We'll, um, see, you, no we'll, we'll see you next Monday for episode five. I'll yeah. be there. And I got oh, a lot look more what it is. Hey, Liz. Oh, Joey's, <laughs> Joey's only fans ain't, ain't killing it, huh? <laughs> She's my only subscriber. Oh, man. So it's not zero. What, what a shock. Uh, that's good. <laughs> good to see you, Liz. All right, J-Rat. We'll see you later, brother. All right. Take it easy, guys. Peace out, brother. Bye, J-Rat.
Take it easy. Uh, all right. Good. And then we were two. All right. Yeah. Good to see you, Liz. Um, all right. Alien Romulus. Let's do this shit. Yeah, let's do this. I'm gonna play that one more time. That was too quick. I mean, it's. Dude, that was pretty hardcore, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so I guess the big question, are you a big fan of the Alien series? Uh, I, I like the Alien movies, yes. So I I, so I, I, did, I was in more interested in this trailer than I was Joker 2. That looks pretty yeah. good. I, I mean, I, I don't really know what's going on with this movie. I mean, I, I paid attention a little bit to some mm -hmm. YouTubers that have covered it. But okay. it, that trailer was pretty good so far. I like that. Yeah. I uh, that was the, the that and be uh, so the thing contest that was the second biggest uh view trailer after Beetlejuice. So I really want to talk about Alien Romulus. I mean, the Alien franchise is amazing. I love the first two. I mean, my favorite is the second, you know, Rick, me guess, too. And, the second one's the best, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, obviously, you know, if you guys disagree or agree, well, um, and you know, I, I mean, I mean, there were there were good things in in the prequel, you know really scott film but it, it just wasn't alien really so i'm very excited to see freddie arvis who did the the remake of the 2013 evil dead and did the the fantastic film don't breathe um i think this is going to be more the first film you know more horror which is great and and like we saw that trailer it, like it looks badass it looks very like you know you know the 1979 film which is great so i'm like very excited for august uh, when it comes around you have is, that, is that what it comes out of August? Yeah, that, yeah. Because initially this movie was supposed to be uh, in Hulu, just like Prey, but it, they changed their minds to be a uh, release in, in the theaters. Oh, okay, cool. I'm down with yeah. that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like sir. that. I mean, not knowing the whole, not really knowing the story or the characters or anything like that, and whatnot. It's really hard to know what to say about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Other, other than that, it looks good. It looks suspenseful. You know. Yeah, I mean, which is good. I mean, that's what you want for an alien movie. You know, it looks, it, it looks horrific. It looks pretty horrific. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and if you want to know what what is in the timeline, they're they're saying that it's between the first and second. So it's so it's in between the the first two films for this movie. Okay. Oh, okay. And yeah, because a lot of people just was kind of like because you know we've been jumping. You know, in and out with the continuity with the alien franchise so this is going to be in between the first two uh and this is not going to be uh the you know the the chuck strikers these are going to be more colonists 
uh, people. It's, it's going to be a standalone. It's not going to have uh, <laughs> any connection to like the the any of the other original characters or like that and whatnot. No, um, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll probably have like the Utani Corporation and whatnot will be in there and all that shit and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, they're probably working with them. You know, oh yeah, because they exist at that point in, in that in the timeline. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they're big. You know. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, that's something I. That's good to bring that up. In fact, at that point in the timeline, they'd be looking for the aliens, right? Yeah, because in the first film, they they discovered. The, yeah, yeah. So so Watani wants the aliens at this point. Yeah, at this point, yeah. Uh, in the you know in the second film, Burke knows about it because of the the, the yeah, you know, of course. Um, in the second film, so yeah, so at this point, yeah, Leon Charlie is are like are interesting to make the city the city morphs into like weapons, yeah, you know, for the army. Yeah, no, it, it's it's good. I like do like the aliens films. That's pretty much it, folks. Why don't we call it? A why don't we call call it a night, Andre? So we'll have the, well, the early show tonight. Yeah, I this was a fun show. It was another successful show. I think we should go. Of course, yeah, it was. Let's end. get out of here. All right, folks. We appreciate all of you. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time. Peace out. God bless you. If I try to do it, I'm a do it.